Hello and thank you for buying Henson's Flying Machine Skydog. This kit comes on five sheets of laser cut balsa wood. It includes written instructions and these video instructions. To identify each of the parts on each sheet, you will need the printed double sided parts list. The kit also comes with 3D printed parts, including the nose cone and motor mount. The kit comes standard for free flight rubber and with the motor mount ready to accept the capacitor free flight kit. To assemble the kit you will need balsa cement or super glue, sharp knife to cut out. It's also recommended to have a small amount of sanding paper or a nail file. Begin by marking each sheet with the numbers on the part sheet. Once you've done that, identify the beginning parts, part 1A and 1B, which are the fuselage sides. In order to begin assembling, first remove the part from the sheet, cutting carefully through the tabs using a sharp knife or scalpel. Parts should lift away. Remove any interior parts, being careful not to throw away any marked parts that you will need later. If you have any burrs remaining, just trim them away, or if you want to get rid of the laser cut marks, you can sand with a very fine grit of sandpaper. To begin building your Skydog, you'll need parts 1A and B, fuselage sides, parts 2A, the main wing spot and the cockpit support, part 4A, the rear of the cockpit former, and part 3A, the nose support. Begin by inserting the wing support into the top of the cockpit. You may need to slightly sand or trim this part to get the fit flush. Once it's in, it should plug directly into the slot in the bottom and the top. From there, plug in the rear of the cockpit former, align this with the bottom of the fuselage, and just test fit part 3A, the nose former. If any of these parts need trimming or slightly sanding, now would be the time to do it. Then, using any 90 degree angle, you can see the side of one of the pieces of wood or an offcut of balsa. Just check that that is at 90 degrees. Once so you're happy with that, glue into the tabs. and along any of the joints where the two pieces meet. Again, double checking your 90 degrees. So, moving on to the rear former, push into the tab slot. You'll see it protrudes slightly from the bottom of the fuselage. Check the 90 degree fit, so you're happy with it. Glue along the connection seams. Make sure that it's set down snug. And once it's set, you can carefully move on to part 1A, the opposite side of the fuselage. Slot it in top first, and then the bottom and follow on by connecting the rear of the cockpit. You can see the framework starting to shape there and you can again glue just here, here. Now with that starting to come together you'll want the nose support 
which will bring in the two nose ends it slots into the tabs there and you can brace this from the outside do onto the tabs and then from the inside a little touch of glue you can see already the fuselage is starting to take that classic shape I'll have to dry for a minute for the second part of the fuselage build you will need part 5A which is the rear tail former this slots into the two tabs here just dry fit it and if any trimming is needed to get it to fit flush do that then also compare the two ends of the tail to make sure that coming down parallel and there's no strange angles you see that if you put too much pressure on one side it will adjust the tail length so just check it once you're happy with the way it's seated just glue it in place along the inside keeping the tail square moving on to the nose parts 6a and 6b are going to form the top of the cowling you can dry fit those into the two slots on the nose there and there just for the cockpit Once you're happy with it, glue the tabs on both. Now, as these parts are the same, there is a slightly raised spot on the forward part, part 6A, which you can trim down if you like, just to get it that nice flush look. You can also do that with a bit of sandpaper. the underside of the fuselage nose parts 7A and 7B slot directly in here and here pushing down into the tabs until you get the correct fit be careful not to break the balsa while doing this 7B going in slightly further back building up the frame of the airplane. Check the alignment along and make you're happy with them and then glue on the inside and also on the tabs. There you are. To start completing the fuselage and building the tail section you will need part 8A, leaving aside part 8B for now. You'll need part 9A and 10A and B. Firstly, taking part 8A, slide part 9A along the slot until it fits flush, like so. Then take part 10A or B at this stage, it doesn't matter, and line it just above the wheel there with the trailing edge in line with part 9A. Make sure it sits flush. Go along the following edge. and also where it touches part 9A. This is going to form the strong part of your tail. Flip it over and do the same on the other side, making sure that the diagonal is facing downwards and they are pretty much aligned on both sides. Again, for strength and 
for the connection here. Taking the fuselage in one hand and the completed tail assembly in the other, just try fit the small tabs in the front into the slots in the rear of the fuselage. Squeeze the tail plane together until you're happy with the fit. Check it to be straight along the fuselage and glue along the edges of the fuselage and the tail unit here on both sides. And also then for some reinforcements just glue on them here where the two pieces would touch and that will give you a stronger tail assembly. You can see now the fuselage is taking shape properly. To begin building the tail take part 11A and fit it into the slot just below the tail fin and above the support. It should slot all the way forward. Now, as there is a little bit of space here, you can either pack it or just glue it directly to the tail fin upright on both sides. And also the front, and turning the machine over, glue it underneath as well. It should ensure you have a really strong bind. Now, at this point, you can if you want to fit uh, 12 A and B, which are the tail fins, but for this purpose, we are going to leave it off till the end of the build. With the tail in place, we can start finishing off the cockpit, which includes part 13 A, which is the instrument cluster. If you want, you can put some paper backing behind here with some drawn on dials and such. This fits here into the slanted slot just in front of the cockpit window. Now, start with one side, align it, and then just press it in place. It should touch up to the front of the cowling construct there. Align it on both sides. Do it on the taps. And for extra strength, you can just put a little bit of touch on the front of that cowling there. Uh, the next part is part 14A, which forms the top support for the wings. The slots into the tabs like so. Now, don't be worried if it's a little out of alignment to begin with. You can trim it and squeeze in the side parts. As you can see, the angled section faces rearwards. Start by gluing the rear into place just along the seam there. Make sure this is a good bond as it really does build a lot of strength for the wing later. And then pinching forward, just make sure you have your alignment correct there. And glue on the tab line. On both sides and on the wing support. You also glue just on the inside here where it hits that wing spar. Now at this point if you want to do the inside of the cockpit in the black card provided in the kit this would be a good time to trim it, glue it in place and get everything as you want it. You can also do that in a clear plastic if you want. As this is going to be a display model I'm not going to fill it in for now. The wing comes in two sections, the forward edge and the trailing edge, which fit together using these tabs here. Parts 15A and 16A will form one wing, and parts 15B and 15, uh, 16B will form the alternative wing. The ailerons are provided loose and can either be glued into place or fattened using these pre-cut hinge holes here. Now these are available if you want to convert to micro RC or free flight with adjustable. But for this purpose we will fit them together. So align part 15A and 16A. Then glue the tabs together 
wherever they meet, getting a good bond on the outer edge and along the inner edge. Now, leaving the ailerons aside for a moment, there are two types of wing profiles. The Type 1 is the outer one which has two holes in it and the wings bar hole. Now these fit into the outer edge of the wing and you can start <coughs> from the outside edge and just to reinforce that bond there, do one Type 2 to the outer edge, aligning it to the forward edge there and to the inner edge one type one brought in here again push it forward to align it butt it up flash to the side and glue it in place like so once that's dried and set you can continue along with the appropriate wing profiles in each side type two going into the inner edge and type one going into the outer edge to continue with the wing using type one on the outer glue here yeah, make sure to align forward again glue along the edge of the inner wing support as you can see with these they have a hole in the center of the wing which will later form the support for the wings and for the landing gear now using the aileron to create a uniform space Choose a gap, approximately two apart, line forward, use an off cut of balsa to judge the distance, and glue the rear and the front perfectly parallel. Continuing down, use similar spacing. Glue in parallel. And align forward. Make sure when you are spacing the wing profiles not to foul the hinge slots here. Continuing on the inner side, use type 2 and again starting from the outer edge here. This will build a lot of strength for that wing support and any heavy landings. Line forward and using a touch of glue reinforce on the front. Fit the inner aileron to give you some idea of guide sizes. Choose your spacing, align it perfectly angular, and glue to the wing rather than to the aileron if you're going to have moving ailerons. If not, glue it the whole way along. And in this one, if you're having moving ailerons, make sure not to foul that inner edge there. Is the completed wing assembly now when you come to build the other wing um, it will have to be a mirror opposite of this wing so it's better to lay the second wing out as a mirror image here and just repeat the entire process for the second wing. assembling both wings 
as opposites here. You can see how they are mirrored against each other. On this wing, I have attached the ailerons using glue to the wing formers. If you are going to convert RC, you can do so simply by trimming the back of the rear formers and using the pre-cut holes in order to create hinges. This can be done with thread or small plastic hinges. In this case, as we're going free flight, I'm simply going to glue the ailerons into place on the trailing edge of the wing and along the seam. Repeat the outer aileron and along the seam. All connections. Once you're happy with the wings, take your fuselage. Now these two arms coming out the side of the fuselage fit into these slots here and give the wing its shape. They should fit into the bottom there. You may need to trim them slightly as density of both varies. Slot the two tabs here into the cockpit top and raise until it fits at the bottom there. As you'll be able to see, it creates the perfect angle for the wing. Once happy with it, begin first by gluing the strength of there and then the tabs and run some glue all the way along the seam. And from the other side, inside the tab and glue. Repeat the process with the other wing. Slot into the tabs and into the guide. Make sure the correct angle is satisfactory for gluing in place and then hold until dry. With the wings in place we can start finishing the more delicate sections of the fuselage, building up the nose framework. Identify on the instructions the runners that form the nose and just press those into the slots. Press them down until they sit flush. Careful not to break any of them. And then glue on the connection. When you go to put the side formers in, build all the way back to the cockpit instrument panel and start gluing from there so that you get a nice curve into that instrument panel. Again, all the way up to the instrument panel. And then just bend former forward. Allow those to dry for a few minutes in place. And then using a sharp blade just carefully trim away flush the wind they sell. Identify the rear fuselage formers and using the outer of the two slots and the top of the fuselage formers, build from the stringers to just next to the tail. You can go further back if you want to create a more rounded tail, which we will do here. Again, you want it to touch the wood only very slightly. Start gluing from the front flush down into the former, both places, and 
just where the bolt of stringer meets the tail. And repeat this on the other side. And just align this the same on both sides to where it meets the tail. And again, glue to the tail for reinforcement. Once you're happy with that, trim them just forward of the rear cockpit firewall. Try and get it as flush as possible. And you're ready to put the rear of the cockpit in next. From the instructions, identify the rear cockpit facing. If you have already built your card cockpit, build these over the top of it. If you're leaving it free, that's fine as well. Glue from the bottom into the inner hole of the cockpit former and up to the top of the cockpit. See the empty ones there. Again, these have been supplied along this so that you can trim them. Just make sure you're happy with all the fits first. Everything should go together fairly smoothly. And then you can, using the top as a guide, trim it flush on both sides. Beginning on the underside of the fuselage, you're going to want to find the two longest stringers. Start from one side and butt up against the tail. Go down one side of the slots in the bottom, carefully bending the balsa stringer all the way through to the front. Glue it in the tail support area. Then into each of the fuselage cross sections. When you get the tissue covering on this, it will look perfect and give you that nice rounded airplane bottom. And with the second stringer, just repeat it in exactly the same way. Dry fit it into all of the slots first, making sure to carefully bend it without snapping it. Begin gluing on the tail and follow through each section there. And once you're totally happy with the way it's sat, just trim flush from the nose. And that forms the curved part of the fuselage floor. Now to begin building the landing gear, find parts 19A and B. These form a framework around these slots in the bottom here. Now just make sure that it echoes around the outside there. Then glue it into the top. This basically forms a seat for the landing legs that come out from the bottom. Repeat the same on the other side, obviously making sure that the long rear side is in the same direction. Before fitting the actual landing gear, we can look at the wing support units. Included in the kit are several wing support sections. Now these can be put in a variety of ways, either from this support hole here to the support hole in the center there, in which case you will place into this hole, measure and trim to fit here, or from the same 
hole or the rear one to the fitted landing gear, depending on what style of aircraft you want. Um, it's important to note that covering the aircraft with these in place is quite difficult. So if you do want to cover the aircraft with the tissue, leave these off until afterwards. Fitting the landing gear comes in two parts, 20A and 20B, and they, with the curve facing backwards, fit into slots of 19A and B. Now you can have them perfectly straight with the fuselage like that, which is a slightly stronger free flight, or you can angle them outwards slightly. That is best done purely by judgment, but once you're happy with it, simply glue them to part 19A and B on both sides and on the inside. Once you're happy with the landing gear, you can create a cross brace using some of the spare wing supports, in which case it's just find the point you're happy with, do it in place on both ends, and then using your knife just trim away the excess exposed and flash. That will give you a little more strength on heavier landings. You will still have the wing supports optional to move either from low landing gear or from the higher fuselage mount or in fact both if you want to do a design similar to the Feisler stalk. To complete the tail section um, you can using excess stringers build extra bracing on the tail like so just trimming them and fitting from here to here. This is entirely optional in free flight models it may increase drag so you may choose to set it off. Um, I'm just going to clear them on for now. Just measure them by eye. Trim them down to the size you want. And fit into the slots provided. When it comes to mounting the control surfaces of the tail, you the easiest way to build a hinge is to simply thread between the holes in the flaps and the rudder. However, as this model's free flight, I'm not going to add any more weight to it. I'm just going to glue it in place, and then later I can trim a little bit with some paper. Try and keep it as flat as possible to reduce drag. Repeat with the other size. When you tissue it, it will add a lot of strength to it as well. Now, for the rudder, there is a pair of hinge holes provided on the lower surface but you will need an extra hinge higher up however as this is free flight I'm simply going to give it a little bit of right rudder and glue it in place that will just allow it to turn ever so slightly in the air while having a stronger bond for those heavy landings all the way down and showing bottom of the tail is also done. The uh, kit comes standard for rubber free flight with the 3D printed nose ready to slot on. It also comes with the motor mount ready for the free flight capacitor conversion kit which is the motor like so. Now if you are using the capacitor kit the motor assembly simply presses into the motor mount and the motor mount connects 
the motor through the hole there and it clicks in place. Now before you do any gluing or anything just make sure that the motor turns and then glue where the motor mount connects in. As I'm going to do this one rubber power which is standard comes in the kit I'm not going to fit anything. I'm simply going to place the nose cone where I want it and then making sure it follows the curve there glue around the edges for a strong bond. As we're going with the standard rubber power on this model, you'll find in the kit a cotter pin, a rubber band, a matchstick retainer, the propeller, and two wooden bead bearings. Begin with the matchstick, and you're free to use your own rubber for this, in which case you can go all the way back in the fuselage and mount to any of the cross sections. So I'm using the shorter rubber, I'm going to fit the matchstick just here behind this center point. Fit it quite low down and make sure before actually gluing that you fit the rubber band over it and then place it inside of the aircraft as necessary. The next step is to slightly part the edges of the cotter pin and slide it over the rubber band like so, seating it all the way down into the middle, into the ball, then using one of the bearings slide it over both ends of the cotter pin until complete, then carefully drop that through the nose of the aircraft until the edges of the cotter pin pass out of the 3D printed nose like so. Now holding it from the inside slot the propeller with the catching end over like so, and pull it forward and carefully bend the ends of the cotter pin outwards, holding the propeller, bend one edge further down, like so, so that when the propeller spins, it will catch it. Now the 3D smoothness of the nose will allow the propeller to spin on the power and the rubber band will be slightly raked backwards and always recenter this on the matchstick support. So that will provide your power on the list power mode. Of course if you're going with the motor and the mount you want to fit that in and then fit the capacitor mount using the on the nose braces here as a strong reference point. You can also fit it outside if you want to, it's entirely up to you. Then the wheels of course will press on with the support studs and you're ready to go. And that is the completed Skydog with the wing and undercarriage bracing, uh, reminiscent of the Pfizer Stork. You can of course go the same style as the Cessna Bird Dog and have none of the wing bracing. Um, either way, it's quite a lightweight model and flies quite easily. The only thing left to do now is to put in the main wing spars running along the length of the wing, which slot simply into here, all the way along, pushing up and gluing to the top support here on both sides. And of course covering.